Shall we start? Yes. Good morning. And a happy new year to everyone. Uh, well, I guess this is the first time that it happened that during the batch, my voice went so bad. Today, it is almost back on track. Almost I can say, but still I can feel a little bit of uh, difference in my voice. Uh, in fact, I was listening to the recordings of first six lectures and the seventh lecture. I just had the audio recording. I didn't have the video recording. And while I was listening to my own voice in the seventh lecture where we stopped in the previous one, I was like, is this me who is talking or is it someone else? It is that bad in the seventh lecture. So almost one week gap, isn't it? Yes, almost a week gap. So I think we should have a quick recap. For those who are going to watch it online, for them it's no gap. But for us it is. So I guess maximum five minutes should be good enough for a quick revision. Yes. So the very first thing, if you remember, we started with candlesticks. And we talked about two types of candles. One is a red candle and one is a green candle. Green candle, bullish candle, red candle, bearish candle. Then uh, we talked about a scenario where this is always open, this is always closed, this is always high, this is always low. Okay. Uh, then we talked about the patterns. This is a uptrend. Oh, sorry, trends, not patterns. This is an uptrend. This is a downtrend. This is a sideways trend. Correct. Uh, we said that this is higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. Correct. Next point we had discussed is that whenever we are talking about uh, any type of uh, strategies, we can say we ne need to understand what are the different types of candles which can give us certain calls. We talked about almost five to six types of candles wherein we said that if this is red in color and if this is green in color, this candle will be like a bullish engulfing candlestick. Exact reverse scenario would have been so, of course, this in the red, this would have been a bearish engulfing candlestick. Correct? Both candles, if are towards the end of a trend, then they give a stronger signal. Okay, at the end of the trend, we'll always give a stronger signal. Then we talked about this type of a pattern. One or two. Hammer and inverted hammer. Both are again reversal patterns. Yes, if a hammer comes at the end of a downtrend, then ideally the uptrend should start. And if this hammer comes at the end of an uptrend, a downtrend starts. Then is this called as a hammer? No, there was a different term for that. It was a hanging man. It was a hanging man, correct? And similarly in a reverse fashion, if you remember, that was a shooting star. Inverted hammer at the end of an uptrend. So this is an uptrend. And at the end of the uptrend, you find a inverted hammer. It is not called an inverted hammer. It will be called as a shooting star. We have already written this down. Don't worry. Okay. Then we talked about uh, evening star and morning star concept. If you remember this. Okay. So if you recall a little bit of this. Okay. There's a reddish candle. And then there's a doji. And there's a big, sorry, big green candle. This will be morning star. Exactly opposite will be evening star. This is which type of pattern? Bullish. So basically a signal given is bullish. And had it been a evening star, it would have been a bearish signal. Right? Then we had talked about the various indicators. And in indicators, we talked about various indicators like what? The very first one was? Hmm? Moving averages indicator. Very good. In which we talked about 5, 13, 26 criteria. Yes, 5 is like a? 5 days moving average, 13 days moving average, 26 days moving average. But simultaneously, we said it's not only about days always. We also talked about the concept of a multi-time frame analysis. When we said it could be a day, it could be a week or it could be a month. So in that case, it will be 5 days. Instead of 5 days, it will be 5 months, 13 months, 26 months and weeks, so on and so forth. Correct? We said that this is like a son, father and grandfather concept. Correct. Uh, what was the rule? What was the strategy? 5, 13, 26. Let us say this is 26, this is 13 and this is 5. This is bullish. Which type of call do you get here? Anticipatory buy. And which type of call do you get here? Confirmatory buy. And if it is cutting from the reverse direction like this, this is an anticipatory sell. This is a confirmatory sell. Correct? So this was about moving averages. Then we had talked about MACD concept. 
What is MACD? Moving averages, convergence, divergence concept. And in this, we talked about 26, 12, 9 parameter. 26, 12, 9. What was 26, 12, 9? 26 demo and what was demo? Days exponential moving average. Correct? 26 demo and uh, we were sub subtracting this from 12 demo. Okay? If this is positive, it's bullish. Not, not a buy directly. It's, it's a bullish trend. Okay? This is one such observation. This is one point on the MACD line. This will be one point of the MACD line. We'll go on Plotting this every day. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let us say we got 9 points. And we have drawn this MACD line. Now this 9 points ka average is 1 point on the signal line. So that's how the signal line will start its journey. Okay. What was the thumb rule for that? If MACD line cuts the... So this is assume, this is assume the signal line. And let us say MACD line is cutting like this. Then it's a buy signal, bullish signal. And if it is cutting it from above, it's a sell signal which is generated. And then we also talked about something which were like, like this, like this. What was this? Of course, I'm not using proper colors. This was histograms. Okay. For here, if histograms are above the line, they are generally showing a bullish trend. And here it is showing bearish. So basically what does histogram show? Histogram shows strength. Strength or weakness. Taller the histogram, better the strength is. And shorter the histogram, weaker the strength is. So basically shorter is, it's not that, it's, it's not that strong basically. As and how the histogram's height starts increasing, it starts becoming stronger and stronger. Is this okay? Then we had talked about RSI concept. And what is RSI? Relative Strength Index. Correct? But as I mentioned, many people say RSI, what is the parameter for RSI? Tell me. 26, 12, 14, 22, what? 14. 14 days. RSI is generally 14. Standard is 14. What do we do with RSI 14? Huh, so, uh, plotting we'll talk about afterwards. What, first, what was RSI 14? What is RS? What is RS? Relative strength. Very good. We are trying to compare closing price versus closing price only. But closing price of today as compared to closing price of yesterday. Correct? If this is showing in green, then we are saying it's a relative strength. Today's price is relatively showing greater strength as compared to the previous day's close. Okay, and this is just one observation. I say how many observations? 14. 14 observations. And then we tried again, take average and all that. Okay, so this was the concept of relative strength. Then we said that there's a standard rule versus the traditional rule. Uh, I mean, traditional versus modern way of analyzing RSI. What was the traditional way? Tell me. Traditional? 70 30. And what is the traditional way? If it goes above 70, over, over bought, and it's going to correct. If it goes in the oversold zone, buy. Traditional theory. What is our theory? 60, our theory is 60-40 theory. And what is the 60-40 theory about? If it is above 60, it means that it is showing strength. And that is the reason why it is above 60. It deserves to be above 60. I have taken many cricket examples. Virat Kohli is in good form. Ideally, it should be continuing with that form. So above 60 is showing strength. So it could be a buy and if it is showing going below 40, it will be a sell signal. If the stock is between 40 and 60, what does it signify? It's a sideways trend.